Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Rococo Deluxe Edition. This is a 1-5 to five player hand management, tile management economic game. The game takes place in France during the reign of Louis XV. Louis XV has been throwing lavish balls all season long, and the time has come for the grand ball at the end of the season. You'll be taking the role of owners of competing tailored businesses. You will be hiring and using employees, gaining resources, making gowns and coats to rent or sell, trying to become the most successful tailor in France. How do you become the most successful tailor in France and win the game? By having the most prestige at the end of the grand ball, or seven rounds. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Rococo Deluxe Edition. Now let's take a look at the components. Some of the components you see here are from the Deluxe Edition and add-ons for the game. You have the double-sided main game board. One side is for one to three players, and the other side is for four to five players. This is indicated on the top left. Start player token, queen's favor token and tile, employee cards, the color of thimble and border around the card lets you know what main actions are available when playing this card. The colors can be gold, silver, or bronze. At the bottom of the card is the bonus action. And then if you choose to depute this card, you would discard it and gain the money in the bottom left. Garment tiles. These tiles have the pattern side and the rent side. On the pattern side, you will see at the top of the tile the materials needed to make this pattern. And then at the bottom, you will see the sell or rent reward. When selling the garment, you would gain the money and then discard the garment tile. When renting, you would flip the garment tile over and then place it on the main board. This will help contribute to your prestige points at the end of the game. Resource tiles. When getting a resource tile, you could use it for the top resource, which you would then take the resource tile and place it in your resource tile rack. Or you could gain the bottom tokens depicted which you would gain those immediately, and then discard the resource tile. Thread tokens, lace tokens, money, resource tile rack. In each of the player colors, you have a player board. On the player board is a depiction of the phases for each round. Starting employees, these have your tailor symbol and color in the top right. Trademark tokens and prestige point counters. These are identical cloth bags in blue and white, resource sheets, and finally, your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three-player game, which takes 10 steps. Step one, place the main game board. You'll place the main game board in the center of the play area, making sure to use the side of the main game board based on the number of players. This is indicated on the top left. Step two, place the queen's favor token. Place the Queen's Favor token at the bottom middle of the main game board. Step three, place employee cards. You're gonna separate the employee cards by level, one through six, then shuffle each stack and place them next to the main game board with six on the bottom, and then five, four, three, two, and then one on top. Step four, place resources. You're gonna place the resource tiles in the white cloth bag and then place the bag next to the main board. Step five, Place garment tiles. You're going to place the garment tiles in the blue bag and then place the bag next to the main board. Step six, get player components. You're going to choose a color and get the corresponding player board, trademark tokens, prestige token, start employee cards, and one plastic resource rack. Step seven, place player components. You're going to place the player board in the middle of your player area. You're going to place the plastic resource rack above your player board. You'll place your trademark tokens next to your player board with one of those tokens going on the prestige track at zero. Then you'll place your starting employee cards face down to the left side of your player board. This represents your employee supply. Step eight, create supply pools. You'll place the thread tokens, lace tokens, and the money next to the main board. Step nine, get starting resources. Each player will get 15 in money, one lace token, and one thread token. Step 10, determine the start player. The last person to use a needle and thread will be our starting player and gets the starting player thimble. So for this game, blue will be our starting player. Now let's look at the gameplay. A game consists of seven rounds. 
This is indicated by all of the employee cards in the draw deck running out. A round. A round consists of four phases. Prepare for new round, select three employees, perform actions, and receive income. Now let's look at each phase in detail. Phase one, prepare for new round. This phase is carried out in four steps. Step one, check for the queen's favor. You can ignore this in round one. If a player has the queen's favor, they would place it back onto the main board and gain the start player marker. Step two, new employees. You will remove and discard all of the employee cards on the main game board. This is indicated by the red down arrow. And then you will draw four new employees from the employee draw deck. Step three, refresh resources. You will fill any empty spots in the resource display left to right. Step four, refresh garment tiles. You will remove the two rightmost garment tiles and discard them. This is indicated by the red down arrow. And when discarding garment or resource tiles, you do not place them back into the bag until the bag is empty. Then you will slide the remaining garment tiles to the rightmost spot available. And then you will fill the garment tile display right to left. Then we will move to phase two. Select three employee cards. Players will simultaneously select three employee cards from their supply. Their supply is the face down employee cards to the left of their player board. From the second round on, if you have zero, one, or two employee cards in your supply, you would use those employee cards in your supply and then choose the remaining card or cards to make three employee cards from your discarded employee cards moving your discarded employee cards back to your supply. Once all the players have chosen their three employee cards, we move to phase three, perform actions. In turn order, players will play an employee card and then take the main action and then possible bonus actions. Their main action is based on the color of the thimble and border of the employee. And the bonus action is located at the bottom of that employee card. If the employee card was gold, then all six main actions are available. If the employee card was silver, then all but the higher employees action is available. And then if the employee card was bronze, all of the actions are available but the higher employee, queen's favor, and the garment tiles. These are indicated on the main game board with the thimble and X. Keep in mind that you can always forfeit a main action and or a bonus action. Now let's look at the six main actions. Acquire resources. You would purchase a resource tile by paying the cost based on the number of tiles in that drawer. There are multiple drawers with three to four tiles each. You would pay two in money if there are three or four tiles in the drawer, one in money if there are two tiles in the drawer, and the resource tile would be free if there's only one tile in the drawer. Once you've chosen the tile, you would choose to use it for the silk, placing it in your resource tile rack, or get the bottom tokens and discard the resource tile. The second type of main action is fund a decoration. These decoration locations are indicated by a gold circle with a number inside and silver going around the border. Some of the decoration spaces give you income during the game. These are the two kitchen locations in the middle bottom of the main board. They are indicated with the hand and money. You would pay the cost located inside the gold circle and then place a trademark token on that circle. All of the decoration locations will give you prestige at the end of the game. The firework decorations at the top would allow you to multiply the prestige on a garment tile. And the statues in the middle allow you to gain prestige based on your garment color sets. The third type of main action is to depute this employee. You would discard the employee out of the game and gain the money in the bottom left. When doing so, you can gain the bonus action at the bottom of the employee card one last time before discarding. Keep in mind that you can depute a starting employee, but you must have a minimum of four employees. The fourth type of main action is to tailor a garment. This can only be done by gold and silver employees. This is where you will choose a garment tile from the garment tile display to create and then to sell or rent. If the garment tile has a gold thimble, then you must have a gold employee to make this garment. You would pay the money depicted under the tile, then you would pay the silk and token cost located on the top left of the tile. When discarding these resource tiles, they would not go back into the bag until the bag is empty. Then you would choose to rent or sell the garment. If you choose to 
rent the garment, you would flip it over and place it on an open hall spot. The hall spots with a gold thimble require a gold employee to place the garment tile on that spot. Some of the hall locations also have a bonus that you will collect once you place that garment tile on that open hall spot. Then you will place one of your trademark tokens on that garment tile. Keep in mind that as soon as you are in all five of the halls, you will get the all halls bonus at the top right of the main game board. If you choose to sell the garment, you would gain the money depicted at the bottom of that tile and then discard the token. The fifth type of main action is Queen's Favor. Only the silver and gold employee cards can use this action. You would take the Queen's Favor token if it is available and five in money. This will give you the start player marker in phase one of the next round or three prestige points if it's the last round. The sixth main action is hire a new employee. Only the gold employee cards can use this action. You would pay money based on the number of cards still in the display. If there are four cards in the display, you would pay five, three, you would pay three, two, you would pay one, and then if there's one card left in the display, it is free. This card immediately goes to your hand and you get one more action this round. Then turns will continue until all cards have been played by all of the players. Then we move to phase four, collect income. Each player will get income, a base income of five, and then you will add any for the catering kitchen decorations. And then rounds would continue until the end of the seventh round, and then we would go into the final scoring. Final scoring takes seven steps. Step one, money. Convert 10 money to one prestige point. Step two, card and queen. If a player has the queen's favor token, they would get prestige points. And check your employee cards for a blue banner. These give prestige points at the end of the game. Step three, hall majority. You would gain prestige points for majority in each of the five halls. And keep in mind if it's a two player game, only the first place in each hall would score prestige points. Step four, fireworks. You will score the majority in fireworks. Step five, admire fireworks. You would move a garment tile to the matching player spot at the top of the main game board. Step six, statues. For each trademark on a statue, you would gain two prestige points per different colored garment tile up to four. If you have multiple trademarks in statues, you only get to count each garment tile for one set. Step seven, trademarks. Score all decorations, garments, and the all halls bonus. Once all of the prestige is calculated, the player with the most prestige is the most successful tailor in France and wins Rococo. Now let's take a look at some of the expansions and additional components. This is the jewelry box expansion. This comes with a jewelry board, jewelry tile bag, employee cards that are indicated with jewels in the top right, and jewelry tiles. Next we have the solo mode cards. Then we have fancy dresses. These add higher reward garment tiles as well as resource tiles. Festivity dresses. These give a prestige bonus when tailored. And then finally, expert tailoring. These are garments that give different abilities when tailored. 